rushing in, rushing through traffic, he's pushing some trucks in front of him. So, so and we have two new members. So we're so uh, because of that, um, let's go ahead and start with the uh, swearing in. How about that? Yeah. chair, and I shouldn't be, because the, the person who was in this chair for the last uh, year, uh, Phil Lively, uh, rotated off the, the board, and then about a, a little over a week later, uh, he had a stroke, and then uh, some days later he died. So it, Phil Lively, for those of you who don't know Phil, was an amazing person uh, who was active in the community for 25 years, um, and, and, and uh, went to Stanford and had a, had a great, great involvement in the community and with his family. I happened to be able to go, to go to his services and I found out even more about him, but his stories are the same. A man who was always, always there for people, always did his homework, and always wanted to make a difference. And, and everybody, and every one of them, everybody wanted to be there. So uh, I thought it'd be appropriate to uh, start off the, the, uh, the uh, session today with a little moment of silence and, and uh, thinking uh, good thoughts for Phil's family and, uh, and all his friends. Bring up the item, and then the 
the staff gives us an overview of the aspects of the item, and then the uh, the bottom the open to public hearing, so that the first of all, the person the person who had the uh, had the uh, uh, item brought to the agenda would talk, and then anyone else who would want to talk on that, and then they could close the public session, and then there's a discussion at the board, and action is appropriate. All right, so I'll I'll make sure that, that we follow that uh, that process every time. So the, the next. Uh, the first item is the variance to 43 Tuscaloosa Avenue, and it's a request for a variance for uh, number 3 building. Thank you. The applicant is requesting a variance for the location of a new detached garage. Um, the main, the front yard setback for the main residence for this property is 60 feet, but due to location of several heritage trees, uh, the, the applicant decided to push that back farther, so it's a little over 83 feet from the front property line. Um, detached accessory structures, the minimum setback requirement is 30 feet behind the front line of the main residence or 120 feet from the front property line. So in this situation, if the house were so sited right at that front yard setback, they could have the detached garage 90 feet from the front property line. But since it's set back farther, that pushes the garage as well back farther on the property. Um, they did have a conceptual plan that was reviewed by uh, the town arbors that did have the garage pushed back a little bit and complied with those setbacks. However, uh, there was concern about the impact of heritage trees in that location. Um, so we decided to take a look at um, pushing it forward and seeing if we can preserve the heritage trees, and that then necessitated the variance. Uh, so the applicant is requesting the variance to allow the garage to be located um, seven feet, eight inches from the front line of the main residence, so it well exceeds that you know 90 foot from front property line intent, but it doesn't comply as due to the location of the garage. Um, we did public notice this item. All of our items, we provide no neighborhood notification in a five hundred foot radius, um, and we have not received any neighborhood comments. So I'd be happy to answer any of your questions. Sally's also reviewed the plans, could answer questions, and we have the project architect here this evening as well. Okay. Any questions? Before I open public uh, comment. All right. Well, let's, let's hear from the uh, applicant. You're here. Uh, good evening, commissioners. Uh, welcome, new commissioners. Good to see everybody. Uh, Go ahead and state your name. My name is Jude Carrick. I'm the architect for Pacific Peninsula Group. Sorry, didn't mean to do that. Uh, this is an item that uh, we've explored with staff. Um, as uh, Lisa has said, the original concept for this was to have a fully compliant project. Um, but uh, to our advantage, is how this lot has numerous uh, heritage oaks on it and redwoods, uh, over 20 by my count. So locating the structures was, uh, you know, we went to great lengths to think about the trees and preserving the trees. Uh, this is a case where if we had a compliant garage location, we would be impacting three substantial heritage trees. Uh, and so in conversations with the the town arborist as well as our arborist, we thought it would be best to pull the garage forward and therefore have less impact on those heritage trees in the rear. Unfortunately, by pulling it forward, even though it's still behind the front line of the house, it doesn't comply with the, Her or the Atherton rules for uh, accessory structure setback. But we feel uh, you know, our intent is to preserve the trees and then above and beyond that, the garage is further screened from the street by numerous heritage trees at the front property line. So the, the impact on the streetscape is very, very minimal, but you know, our goal is to preserve the heritage trees and we think that this is justification for the variance. We did look at alternative locations for the garage, but good design was dictating that the garage be located on the northern side of the property because once again, we have numerous trees on site and the sunnier side of the property is on the opposite side. So that ideal, or that really doesn't work for you know, the California life, lifestyle environment. So we fe felt best to keep the garage where it was, yet pull it forward. So I'm here uh, to answer any questions, if you have them. Thank you. Uh, and I, I thought that your analysis, I, I appreciate the fact that you did the analysis, but it's looking at that on the other side too. Probably would have impacted some trees on the way out of the driveway too. It, it would, and uh, you know, that site was an estate property, and so these trees have prospered. Right. So uh, we feel that anything that we do over there in that location potentially is going to take down some larger oaks. So we want to really preserve those three, I think, that are on that side. Yes, Thank you. Questions? Okay. Thank, thank you. you. Any uh, any uh, public comment? Uh, any on this item? Anyone here to talk? 
thoughts on that item? All right, then I'll, I'll get to you for a second. Huh? I'll close the public hearing and bring it back to the board for discussion. Uh, and uh, uh, basically, I'll, I'll start unless you want to jump in. Um, for me, it, it seems uh, totally appropriate to make a modification, particularly when the arborist does do this, and I like that. Um, and, uh, and also, I think it fits on the, on the property. I think also, is it just you can confirm for me, if this garage were attached, it would, it would be okay, mm -hmm. right? Well, we would have a side yard setback yeah. issue. Yeah, okay. But right, the front yard it would conform. Yeah, correct. Right. So I <laughs> so I'm comfortable with with in the what I what I would say would be the, the use of the lot and the uh, and the uh, impact on the trees is a good modification uh, and it doesn't impact any neighbors or anything like that. So that's that's all I would say. Okay. Three things. One staff su supports it. Trees are are relevant to me. Um, the map works whether it's a setback or setback issue, I think it's a reasonable request, mm -hmm. um, so I support it. Right. Mm -hmm. And I agree with uh, my compatriots uh, in every regard, and I read the report um, quite thoroughly, I visited the site, um, and met a very nice gentleman by the name of Eric, who at first came out a little bit like a bulldog, he was wondering <laughs> what I was doing, you know, in my parked car, kind of <laughs> looking, Not, I didn't quite have binoculars, but um, and the holes in the fence were very <laughs> <laughs> um, And he was very gracious once he understood uh, what my purpose was in being here. It is a beautiful lot, beautiful trees, and I, I think the plan makes perfect sense. Okay, then I, then I would need a motion. And, uh, I move. Uh, do, we need to, do we need to state the entire thing or just move? It's, it's usually best to state the entire thing just because there's a couple of things in there. is requesting a heritage tree removal permit to allow the removal of a 28-inch pine tree. It's located at the front property line near the intersection of Atherton Avenue and Edwards Lane. Um, and they propose the removal with uh, the replacement planting of two 60-inch box southern live oaks to be located in that front corner of the property. Um, staff did take a look at the tree, and although it's not doesn't meet the criteria for staff to approve it, which is dead and seized or dying, um, the tree really isn't thriving. It's not a native species to the town. Um, so we see the benefit of replacing it with the, with the oak trees. Um, so staff is supportive with the replacement requirement, and I'd be happy to try to answer any of your questions as well as our town arborist. Yeah, it didn't really lean as much as I thought it was going to be leaning when I saw the, when I saw the picture. It's a good angle of the picture, really by the way. <laughs> 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 so, all right. So well, with that, we'll go ahead and have the applicants here. You can come up and talk. Good evening. I'm uh, Bill Sigali from Sigali and Serene. We're landscape contractors. Uh, we're also doing the installer on that property. Um, one of the concerns, I guess, for the homeowner is that some of the things that were installed there 
the driveway, and I think there's a, re a wall in the front. Uh, some of the roots were removed, and so his concern is that it may impact the tree and eventually cause a, a, f a tip over. Um, we've actually already installed one of the 60-inch box oak trees uh, already, and we have the other one tagged and ready to go upon your approval. Okay. Okay. Any questions? Uh, Mike, I think I do have a question. And you might be to... The middle yeah. microphone will still work. Oh, thanks. It should be up. And that is just a question about, since this is considered a heritage tree, is that correct? Yes. Yep. Because it's in the um, it's designated... In the Protection area. It's in the tree preser yeah, the tree preservation area. Right. Yes. But it, it's not a native species. So it's not native, uh, but any species is a heritage tree that's over 15.2 inches in that area. So yes. it's still protected. It's not native to California. Right. And so would it be good practice to replace a protected tree um, with two other trees that are native species, that thereby they, they would be considered heritage trees, but only once they're grown to the diameter that That's constitutes true, yeah. a heritage yes. tree? So what, what so are the when pros you, and cons? So when, it, you take out, when you take out a heritage tree that is not an oak, you can replace it with any species and usually I like people to replace it with a moderate to large stature species, um, but when it's when it's an oak, you replace with an oak. So it's good that they want to replace with this with an oak, but it is a southern oak, so that is native to the southern states of the United States, not California. So if you know that's something to consider, I consider that um, it's still an oak tree, and they are willing to do 60 inch boxes. What's usually required is 224 inch or 136 inch. So they are going well beyond what, what is required. Um, and they've been willing to work, um, work with us. They also wanted to put a tree in that triangle area because it's a corner lot. But we said no because you're not allowed to put trees there anymore as of a month ago. So um, they're really trying to work with us. And what is the uh, watering requirement? Trees. Supposedly, the southern oak needs more water um, than our than our native oaks, which don't really like a lot of water. Um, but it's something that, if approved, and I don't think the the homeowner really wanted the southern oak, but I think to have the tree removed, they would be willing to consider another species. I don't know, but I would like to take that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. Hold on. yeah. So what we'll do is that we'll come back to these questions mm -hmm. later on. What, what I'd like to do is like make sure we have all the public comment first, and then we can ask the dad the kind of detailed questions later. Mm -hmm. uh, so let's go ahead and are you are you? I was, uh, uh, Andrea is actually the landscape architect of the project, so if you can. All right. Good. Yeah. 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 Uh, you, we want full money's worth, obviously. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I just wanted to state our reasoning for doing the Southern Live Oak. Um, right now, um, next to the existing heritage tree, we also have a very large redwood tree, which is being impacted by the tree we would like to remove. So if we remove this tree, it allows for the redwood tree to really grow in size and have a full shape. And because the, re the watering re requirements for a redwood tree is higher than our native oak that's why we chose the southern oak because actually a southern oak can handle less water too mm -hmm. but it also can ha you know can handle more water to keep the redwood tree happy so that's that's our reasoning mm -hmm. for choosing it mm -hmm. and we've started to do it more often because it also doesn't get the oak root fungus yeah yeah so just wanted to let so you know so, it's, so it, it'll it, it allows it then to be a situation where the water if it gets too much water like in your grassy area but also if it doesn't do exactly does that make sense yeah, to that you? makes sense too okay yeah. good i get your blessing <laughs> <laughs> all right any other comments then um just also um she mentioned that we couldn't put a tree in the right the angle of the right of way but just outside of it we are adding one tree there so we're really bringing that streetscape around 
um, the corner there. And well, the sawdust or whatever that is the dust that the the decomposed the granite. Yeah. 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 Right. You'll see a lot of that now, but all, we also planted lower planting in there, and that's going to really fill in. So you'll just be left with the parking strip okay. around the edge. Okay. Um, we need that corner clear for site visibility, yes, right, and right. we have the low planting, but yeah. not a tree or anything. Yeah, okay. that, that would be a problem. That, yeah. That's a relative narrow street, and they come in, in or out of it. Mm -hmm. More questions? Um, one other question. Um, so can someone explain, I'm not sure who, who sure. would be the appropriate person, how the current tree is impacting the redwood and how the new trees would not? Right. Um, is it by, by shading? Or? It's more so that this tree is planted fairly close to the redwood tree, and we actually have space to put the new tree further away from the redwood tree um, because there is quite a bit of space there, but we can't do it now because we would hurt the root structure of the existing heritage tree. So once we once we remove that tree, we would be able to site the proposed tree, you know, for far away enough to keep the redwood tree happy. And I think over time, you know, we would limb the redwood tree a little bit so they can coexist together. And, but currently, how how is the pine impacting the redwood? It's growing too close. It's, so it's just kind of squishing the one side of the of the redwood tree. So it's not actually not letting it develop uh, the way it should. And what is the health of the redwood tree? Redwood tree is in good shape. The, the pine tree is kind I've of... I've been on this job for 10 years. Have you seen the pine tree? I'm going to yeah. say that yeah. I did go to the property yeah. and okay. I had a, a visual... It's not the best thing. specimen, but it, I still feel like it's not dead or dangerous. It's so not the, I'll tell you, the, that pine tree specimen. is ugly. <laughs> Well, yeah. uh, but my concern <laughs> is that it is a heritage tree, mm -hmm. and it does not appear at this point to be in ill health, if mm -hmm. that's an appropriate term to use for a tree. Um, and I am not quite clear on how it impacts the redwood. It, it, I'm not. Do uh, we have photos that show? Visually, show it's not pretty. I yeah. understand yeah. that. Mm -hmm. um, I couldn't tell if the red was infected. Yeah, it's not. It's I mean, part of the reasoning is that we are after, I mean, you can tell this is black and white, but, you know, here's the redwood tree. It's a nice solid mass that provides a nice screening and streetscape along that edge. And that's what we're proposing for here. And right now you can see right through these leaves and aesthetically it's not the best looking tree mm -hmm. as you mentioned. And we're just after trying to create a cohesive kind of streetscape screening along this edge. Mm -hmm. And I completely yeah. understand that. And I know uh -huh. if I was a property owner, I'd want the same thing. Uh -huh. But for me right now, mm -hmm. it seems to be a separate argument. The aesthetic and then whether the tree is at a state of health that would. I guess it's, yeah. You know, I understand what you're saying. It being removed. I guess for us, it's, you know, it's the whole concept of urban forestry and creating a healthy forest that sometimes you have to take out some of these bigger trees to create a healthier life cycle. So in our opinion, by taking this tree out, you're, you're allowing the redwood tree to be its best healthy form. Instead of having soon, quite soon, this redwood tree is gonna start growing into this pine tree. So for me, looking to the future and creating a healthy you know, streetscape there, I really think taking aesthetics aside, that it's creating an overall healthy screening streetscape Streetscape. Would a, um, would a, a, a possible uh, mitigation be uh, topping the pine tree? No. We don't want to do that. No. no that's, 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 a bad, that's a bad word, topping. Oh, sorry. I apologize if I used the correct terminology. That was correcting my knowledge. The terminology is the wrong outcome. 
<laughs> yeah, and, and so I'm just just kind of thinking through a few different yeah. scenarios. So let's keep on. Let's keep on going. Sure. Probably come on. We'll come back to the board comments. All right. Any other comments? I'm just wanting to leave with you and just reiterating, it's not really like we're after getting rid of this tree. Actually, the client was very committed to this tree for a long time and nursing it along. And it just hasn't done much, right? And so as us, we've been on this job because it stopped and started, we've been on it for almost 10 years and seeing that it hasn't changed much, but the redwood tree has been growing throughout this it just makes sense to us, you know, looking at a long-term, you know, health of this streetscape edge is to remove it and let the redwood grow and supplement it with the oak tree, the southern live oak. All right, great. Thank you. Thank you. All right, thank you. Anyone else? Go ahead. You go ahead. You can finish right. the public comment. I'm just going to have a couple items. All right. Uh, anyone else here to talk uh, to talk about uh, trees? Just want to update the commission. We were um, looking at updating the, the tree ordinance, mm -hmm. um, and when we were discussing doing that, we were actually looking at um, having pines be allowed by right to be removed um, because there was a lot of concern with that species, and actually did get some um, support from that from the Atherton Tree Committee. Um, unfortunately, we didn't finish the process through, and that would be something that I would love to take up again with the commission now that we have the commissioners on board. Um, and, and also get Sally involved because that was a former artist. Um, so just wanted to throw that out there and then also the, the basis for consideration is the removal of the tree would not be contrary to the purpose and intent of the general plan. And it's, you know, it's pretty vague, but it gives you, you know, some guidance um, to look at. And, and the reforesting I think is an important part of the tree. Mm -hmm. All right, uh, um, then any questions of staff? Uh, agree that the tree is not the best specimen. Um, I definitely think we disagree that the tree uh, is could be dangerous or is dangerous. It's it, and previously the commission thought it, it was important that aesthetic to the public right away is important. Um, and that tree is not the best looking tree for that, but it would put a big hole in the in that in that view. But they are going to replace with another tree that will be also a large stature tree eventually. Um, so, and they're willing to put in 60 inches or, or pretty big trees. So, yeah. so it starts yeah. off with big, a big pole yeah. for a stopper. But yeah. it's not big enough to actually stop the view. Right. right. So it's going to be mm -hmm. a while to, to replicate that, that aesthetic. Mm -hmm. um, but it's not the best specimen. I, I, I think because of the drought and also because of the construction of that house has been going on, going on for many years, it's not thriving. I wasn't here previously, so I don't know what the condition of the tree prior to seven months ago was. Um, I feel like with some supplemental water and maybe fertilizer, it might come back a little more, but if it's been in that condition for most of its life, it will probably continue to be in that condition. So it's growth is limited because of its history. Yeah. yeah. And, and just to clarify, if the tree was dead, diseased, or dying, then it would have been yeah. removed in a stop I would have, I would have And since it doesn't meet that strict criteria, that's why it's mm -hmm. before the It's the planning commission. Yeah. All right. So uh, uh, I'll, move, I'll go to the board for the comments. I, 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 I actually visited the site, yeah. and, and I will say I'm not a big time tree fan. Yeah. Um, and I, I actually did have a question. Sixty-inch box, yeah. Um, how, how 
how Limehouse Hall when it goes in and once it's grown then, or what do you think? Would it be better? I actually have an image of the tree. You guys wanted to go up. As long as we all stay back. We just were trained. He's going to be 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 going symmetrically the way it is here or does it'll be, it take it'll up? start to become more natural. This um, at the nursery they do prune and shape them so they look evenly. So it starts but to look more like an oak at that point. Yeah. yeah. yeah this form does stay a little bit more formal, mm -hmm. but it will become it won't be this perfect shape that it's shown there. But, and I but feel so like how tall does it get there? When it when it goes when, it's, in? when it goes there. Okay. Then it and, and so by year five, how tall is it? Um, I would probably say it could get up to 20 feet at the moment. So it'll grow five feet in five years. Yeah. So it's not a terribly tall tree. They do go, they do go wide. So they go much more wide than tall. <laughs> so they're yeah. kind of like the rest of us. Imagine trees in New Orleans. They're <laughs> wide and, you know. It's very <laughs> similar to our California live oak. So I think it fits in on that street. There's other live oaks, and it, it, to me personally, it fits better with the overall streetscape in that area. Okay. And then fall would be fun. Right. <laughs> Do you want to stack? Right. Let's keep that for the record. Okay. Okay. Sure. So, so my comment, and no, I, so I actually visited this site. I forgot to say that on the last one, uh, in spite of my coaching. Um, <laughs> I went to the site. Loved what the house looks like on the site. I love the landscaping. It's lush. Most of it all the way around is, is great in terms of screening. You get, have the maturity and time of, of seeing that take form. Um, being a builder as well, I actually, it, it, uh, the Benny, like your report says, rather than giving 12 or 24 inch boxes, giving two 60s and replacing of a, I want to use the adjective I was thinking for a, a pine tree. Everybody has their own opinions. <laughs> this isn't like an award-winning pine tree. No, it's not. Um, and no. so from my standpoint, getting that is a great trade-off. I think maybe on your comment, it's just, it would have just been great just to come in and say, hey, this looks so much better, and off we go. So that it's consistent with the report. That, that's what I would say. I support the motion. Mm -hmm. All right. Not the motion. I support the application. Mm -hmm. so. uh, I support it. Uh, because of uh, this pending discussion to take place about how pines may be treated. Well, that's well, up to the commission. It's up to the commission, right? So the, just the fast that, conversations. The so fact that, that um, it uh, <clears throat> was considered previously mm -hmm. and we have the opportunity to bring it back to the commission. Mm -hmm. um, and because uh, Sally says in her report that she can live with it being taken out, um, or the reasons that I will support it. Yeah. So. All right, went to the site, and uh, I agree with a lot of it, a lot of it is the, one of the things that makes me hopeful for this the solution is because everything around this site has done so well. Yeah. That side yard with the, with the green, the shrub in the side yard and the way that you've done the, the combination on that side is really great. As a matter of fact, I'm going, hmm, how can I do that on that? <laughs> so it's, it's really, really, really good. It, it's all, uh, the thing, I guess the thing that is the most uh, sort of funky for me is that the, the statement as to why we're really doing it is, is a stretch. You know, it's not, it's not leaning anywhere near as much as most trees that we could pull out. It's not, it's, it's, uh, you know, it's not near as dead as they, they get. <laughs> you know, so it's just, it's just a malnourished, uh, not a uh, feeble tree. So I'm, I'm comfortable with the outcome I'm not comfortable with the app application, so just for what it's worth for next time. Sure. Um, uh, if you know, if, if for me, what we're trying to do is is, is improve this the look through. I get that, and I and I do believe that the tree that's being chosen will do that relatively quickly. And if the and if the town arborist is comfortable with that, uh, if they're really comfortable with that, then uh, then I can go ahead and, and support it. If the arborist won't support it, I wouldn't be supporting. So she she's providing light on. All right, so with that,
that, I will look for a motion. find that the proposed removal of one heritage tree at 119 Atherton Avenue in Atherton would not be contrary to the purpose and intent of the general plan for the reasons outlined in the staff report and that the commission approve the tree removal with the conditions stated in the draft heritage tree removal certificate. That was a brilliant first Thank you. Yes, Very good. Yes. Right. All right, move the second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? None. Abstain? None. All right, thank you. Thank you for thank the you very much. Thank you. thank you. All right, next item is a special structure permit at 260 Oak Grove Avenue. We'll open up with the staff report again. Thank you. The applicant is requesting a special structure permit to allow a basement under an accessory building. Um, this is a large property on Oak Grove. It's about two and a half acres in area. And the applicant's proposing to construct a 1,600 square foot basement at the back rear corner of the property and the, um, excuse me, accessory building, 1,600 square feet, and the entire area of that accessory building would be a full basement beneath. Um, there's a very small light well that is proposed um, off to the side. And just wanted to clarify for the new commissioners, um, the code specifies that light wells shall be oriented to the interior portions of the property. Um, and I had expressed concern to the commission on that and strict wording of it in that some properties, you know, you could be 200 feet from the exterior, yet it's still a requirement that be oriented towards the interior. So receive some direction to modify the basement ordinance to say that as long as it meets the setbacks for the main dwelling, then you could orient it to an exterior side yard. So that um, was recommended by the Planning Commission and it had first reading at City Council. It will go back again in September for second reading, be effective 30 days after. So this is consistent with the direction of the Planning Commission for that light well orientation. Um, it is screened with landscaping as well and it's located quite a distance so we don't see that there would be any impact. Um, so I'd be happy to try to answer any of your questions. Thank you, you answered my, my only question with the orientation of the light, light well. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Any questions? All right, there's the Hello, Hi. I'm Judith Mattingly, uh, the architect for the project here representing the homeowner. Um, the the uh, summary in the, that the planning department has done is very, very good for the project. Um, and we, we did talk about the light well uh, because we're back in this back corner of the property. We've got a side yard, a backyard, and a side yard, and the homeowner's desire to have a door you know, on the on the other side for the light well. So uh, we are uh, a good 55 feet from the the side property line. We are, we've got some good screening already in place there. Uh, we are uh, gonna follow planning's uh, um, proposal to do additional screening along the rear property line where we're closest to another neighbor. Uh, and uh, the homeowner has done some other work on the property more recently and has been addressing some other screening on that side. So that's what I've got to say. Happy to answer any questions. Well, the location of the accessory structure complies with the code. It, okay. The basement requires the planning commission's consideration. Yes. Because it's an accessory structure. So if they didn't have a, if they didn't have, if they didn't a, have a basement. The basement, they'd already be able to construct it because right. they want Correct. to be right. accessed. Mm -hmm. Correct. Mm -hmm. All right. Any other questions?
and second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? None. Abstaining? None. All right, there we go. Thank you very much. much. All right, thank you. Have fun digging. It was all in the presentation. <laughs> All right. All right. With that, we will go to new business, and uh, this is a consider a request for to amend the Minneapolis Administrative Section six point zero four point two five zero relating to the keeping of foul. And this has nothing to do with the Olympic field. Is that correct? Okay. Good. <laughs> Chickens. <laughs> All right. Cheers. Um, so we have a request from an Appleton resident to take a look at our chicken regulations. Um, currently, the code requires that if you have a chicken, it needs to be housed, so it needs to be in the structure. And then the code further specifies that in these structures for chickens, you need a property of at least 80,000 square feet. So it's really pretty limited. There's not a lot of properties that you could have chickens. Um, we do have several code enforcement cases that are active right now where we've had neighbor complaints mm -hmm. about chickens being adjacent. And the complaint is around the smell and the noise associated with it. Um, I did talk to the code enforcement officer on those, and it seems that um, most of the location of the coops are right up against the property line. Mm -hmm. So I think that this is something the commission would like to consider. Um, what we would do is more research on uh, regulations of similar type jurisdictions. You know, I typically survey Hilltop, Hill Valley, Woodside, and look at others. Um, and we could probably come up with some objective criteria that would be reasonable to allow the chickens and also try to preserve, you know, the, the property owner privacy-ish concerns, noise, odor. Um, so happy to answer any of your questions. It's really up to the commission if it's something you would like to consider. And if so, I would bring something back at a future meeting. Would we be looking at other animals as part of that? Um, that's, again, up to the commission. Mm -hmm. This is really for your opportunity to provide me some direction. Mm -hmm. um, and then I can bring back whatever you're interested in. Our code is very limited right now. Um, you can have, you know, horses with a barn on very large properties as well. Um, I know there's been some interest in having some goats for um, weed vegetation management, and that's not permitted. So code enforcement goes out and kind of herds them along. Um, so you could certainly look at the entire ordinance, or you can narrow the focus down. It's up to you. How's our schedule in the next three months, two months, six months, whatever? Um, we do have few items coming forward. Um, the Civic Center Master Plan EIR will come forward. Um, Menlo School has a project they'd like to put on your next agenda. And then Carton Field is, is a large project, but I think that um, may take a little more time to get through the neighborhood and the EIR process. And then it's really hard to tell about private developments. You know, some months I get five, some months I get two. So that's a little hard to predict. Generally, we don't have many more than five items per agenda. Well, we try to you know, yeah. manage the agenda. And we've also, the Planning Commission's recently recommended some items that streamline the basement review, so you may be getting less basements than the commission's on the past. Mm -hmm. To kind of defer a few more to staff level. Yeah, filling in the basement approvals for right. all of them. Mm -hmm. right. So in general plan and that option. Okay. Yes, that's right. Okay. Um, actually, so, so the question of opening it up would be to me, I'd love to hear public comment about the chickens, but, uh, or other animals, is, do we, is this worth tackling one at a time, or is it, I mean, because I think we're gonna get a different uh, opinion from a variety of people about whether it's chickens or whether it's goats or pigs or sheep mm -hmm. or whatever it might be, and I think, I just don't, I don't wanna turn it into World War II. I'd, I'd like to see something happen where, and that's what I was asking you about time. Mm -hmm. um, having seen this on general plan, it seems morphed into these big mushroom or and so I think, you know, if it's something that we want to do, it, it, it's, I assume it's public comment, it's research into what others are doing, a hearing or two, or in terms of public comment, or what? Right. Yeah. Uh, That's why you're on that seat, by the way. I'm here to do sharing, I promise you. <laughs> um, so that would be my question. It's just what, what do you, estimated time frame one way or the other, if it's one item, if it's yeah, if, if you wanted to just focus it on the chickens, it could be a more streamlined review. If you want to look at, you know, chickens, number of dogs, number of cats, it's obviously going to get more complicated. Um, if we could limit it to just chickens and then goats strictly for a temporary basis, you know, for some tricky hillside weed removal. So you could be rather limited in your review. 
We can move it as fast as the commission wants to move it as well. Um, Any CEQA review on it, or is it exempt, or what is We'll do the CEQA analysis, but um, it's most likely not going to require a robust analysis. I'm anticipating there to be a CEQA exemption, but we'll okay. need to look through that. The, the question I have is, uh, the, would the focus of it be about housing, or about the, the type of animal? I mean, so that's the Whatever thing. Whatever you want. I mean, so <laughs> if it's about this, I mean, so I could think dog run on the of the fence as opposed to are you, uh, you know, 10 feet away from the fence. If it's about, if we narrowed it to housing of creatures, mm -hmm. then, I'm, then I think we could sort of deal with it from a planning perspective. If we deal with what creatures it gets into another thing, right? But, mm -hmm. you know, so we might want to think about it in terms of the structure right. of that, uh, the structure of the type of, of area that they, the animal right. would have. Yeah, I mean, I was, I was actually thinking about that. I know there's concern about chickens being close to property line and noise, but then we don't have a limit on where a dog could be. Right. And, and dogs right. make noise. So right. that would be interesting if you were to have a dog run or right. a dog house. Right. Would it be in a certain location? Right. So how about if we let hop staff go yeah. back and come back with some range mm -hmm. of things that they might consider that would be a reasonable sort of, of the, you don't have to hard barks and things, I don't know, but everything, you don't have to go all the way out to kangaroos mm -hmm. and things, but, but maybe there's a maybe there's a body of reason of work around here. Woodside must have something and you right. know. Right, Woodside other, definitely will. Yeah, have. so using that benchmarking of, that, of a near, a near of properties that have the same issues might be a Yeah, we can do a comparison party if you have a jurisdiction. Yeah. Why don't we start with that and then we figure out if we got if we got enough of a framework that we might be able to move it quickly mm -hmm. or decide that we want to drop it or decide that we need more study. Would that be enough? I'd love to go to the public comment. Yeah, there's a couple of people right. yeah. yeah. comments. Mm -hmm. All right, good. Yeah. All right, is there anyone here to talk on this item? Hi, you're oh, Hi. Yeah. My name is Ellen Bacon. Um, I'm part of the Lloyd Bacon family, and he is the one that wrote the letter about um, maybe uh, amending the code so that a property smaller than 80,000 square feet could have hens. We're not interested in roosters. We're interested in four to six hens, for example. And I know that other communities do limit the number of uh, hens that could uh, be kept. Um, our interest is um, in, um, we eat organically. Our interest is in being able to know what goes into the eggs <laughs> for our young family. And um, other than that, uh, I think everything has been pretty much said as far as I'm concerned. All right, thank you. I just have a question. Um, do you, would you have other animals as well, or? We have a dog and a cat, both domestic, and I think they're not included at this time in this particular No, what I meant was, was, would you be interested in something beyond the scope no. of chicken? Okay. No, no. Okay, good, thank you. Okay, you're welcome, you. okay. All right, anyone else? Hello, my name is Candy Athens. Um, I've been a resident of Atherton for probably 22, 23 years. The way you say that's more than 10. You know. okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I've had chickens probably the last seven years in Atherton. Um, I lived on an acre in Lindenwood. I had 13 at that time. No problems with neighbors, no problems with smell, no problems with anything. Um, they've you know become a part of our life now um, they're you know they come running out to me in the morning it's just they're it's great I have two English bulldogs as well and um, the argument about the smell I my daughter was saying I think our bulldog smell worse than that. yeah <laughs> <laughs> but you know the obvious reasons that we have them is this sustainability um, we get fresh eggs every morning I know what goes into the eggs um, it's just been great, but um, the noise, you know, the, the noise, I mean, yes, they, we have all hens, and, um, you know, they eat all our scraps, they eat the bugs. It's just, they're great. Mm -hmm. I've never had a problem. Um, so, like, when my dogs are out in the morning, people come walking by with their dogs, you know, you get all that noise. Right. So that's something to consider. Right. And my hens do, you know, they do cluck in the morning, and... But um, the dogs are, you know, probably louder. My neighbor's dogs are louder at all hours. But, but 
What I love about the chickens is it's gotten us, it's, we're cognizant of where our food is coming from. And my kids see that um, there's a better respect for food. Um, and, you know, I looked it up online and saw this great <clears throat> quote that keeping backyard chickens has been a historic tradition that's been phased out for, you know, mass produced quickly. You know, these chickens are quickly, you know, farmed and it's just nice to see them free range and it's been great at my house, so I don't see what the problem is. So, so I actually have a question. So, sure. so chickens aren't for you to eat, they're for the eggs, etc. Right. And would you do other animals as well, or are you just interested in chickens? Just interested in chickens. Yeah, it's just chickens. Okay. Yeah. The, uh, the only question I have for you is, do you kiss your chickens? I do. <laughs> <laughs> now, On the head. Interestingly. Do you what? Today, kiss them. Kiss them. Today I received the uh, agenda and saw that this was going to be up for discussion. I heard on uh, NPR, uh -huh. a Center for Disease Control report that you really shouldn't kiss your <laughs> like that. Yeah, Of course, yeah. yeah. Because they but mine are clean. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So just no, as long I'm just as you're teasing. staying healthy. Yeah, no, everything's <laughs> fine. But, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Sure. So, so smells. I don't. No. Uh, what about maintenance and keeping track? It's easy. Um, I enjoy, you know what, they get me to slow down. Um, I really like just being out there with them. It's just, you know, I slow down, I clean the coop. I wouldn't want my coop smelling. I mean, look where, where we live. in your yard? It's in my backyard. Kind of at the gap of fence or how? It's close to the fence. All right. <laughs> just, all right. Mm -hmm. My neighbor has a roll of oleanders, then a tennis court behind that. Right. Mm -hmm. So, you know, which our, our properties are pretty cushioned from one right. another. I mean, I'm on a smaller lot than I was on before, but, um, you know, there's plenty right. of... And so how often do you have to clean, I mean, how many chickens? I have six. six. And so how often do you... Do you, do you know, I probably clean my coop once a month, but um, like my daughter was saying, you know, we go around and clean up the dog poop, right. and that smells more than... Yeah, I've never. I mean, if you like chickens, ever. Right, and if you. Even a thought to me. Right. And I'm, I smell a lot. What about flies? Mm -hmm. though? Yeah, you can get flies, but that's why you don't. You want to keep your coop clean. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't want flies in my backyard. Right. Mm -hmm. So what, what, I don't, whatever is, I'm, I'm getting at is whatever is going to affect your neighbor is going to affect you. Oh, they're, it's, it's going to affect me quicker right. than my neighbor. Right. Right. There is, I, there's no smell, okay. no flies. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you. Is a way to. That is my new staff member, wow. um, Hallie King, that'll wow. be doing the research if you so choose to move oh. forward. Right. So. Wait, can I say one more thing? Go ahead. I know that Menlo Park has chickens. Yes. So, I mean, I know looking at Woodside isn't really going to help our cause, because what are those parcels, three acres? I mean, but I know Menlo Park has chickens. I have friends that have chickens there. Mm -hmm. So, I, you know, I would yeah. hope, I mean, 80,000 square feet. We're going to get, we're gonna get the, the area of... Yeah, so I mean, to look at Woodside isn't going to help my cause. You know, look at looking at Menlo Park. Well, sometimes, sometimes the Woodside, sometimes, all we want to do is to see the range of the houses yeah. regulated in, in its communities around, mm -hmm. and, and then Just we'll take determine what you like the best right. out of each house. Right, and we're going to have it. So, I'll bring uh, any other public comment? I think the only other thing I'd like to mention is that San Mateo uh, County has a code that allows for chickens okay. um, generally. And in fact, that's kind of what we looked at when we came with our chickens, but then we discovered that Atherton had its own code restrictions. Yeah. So yeah, I there's a the, disconnect there. I think the objective here is to, is to address the concern that was brought up to us mm -hmm. and to the degree that we need to, and then find out that if we're doing, if we're doing enough, then we won't do anything. And if we find out that we need to do more, that we'll make people feel comfortable with the way things are being run in the neighborhood. It, and also, chance of the person that brought it up is living next door to either one of you, so mm -hmm. there could be another issue in other areas. But we, so, but let's uh, any, let's bring it back to the, the close of public comment uh, uh, section. And uh, any questions of staff or direction? Actually, staff? I have a question. Yeah. Um, so, from a, a from a county standpoint, um, I can't think of the right thing to say this. So. Zoning law or zoning codes, the county 
county, state, some local? Well, the county regulations are specific to properties that are located in county unincorporated areas. So, so no matter what, it wouldn't apply it to does not anything. Eat those types county. of regulations that are zoning or land use oriented do not apply to Atherton. Correct. They don't if apply to any in the county. We're yeah. just not considered county. So there, we have our own unique okay. regulations. We're not, Correct. We're not a county. Okay. So Correct. legally, there's nothing to stand on for those folks that do have them now and would like to have them. Right. Right. Well, yeah. Would not apply. That would be for a wide range of things. So across the street from me is unincorporated area. So the regulations that would be for the county would be for mm -hmm. unincorporated areas within the county. And then Eden Redwood City has its own regulations mm -hmm. and all the rest of us do. So so it's it's more for the for the governmental body beyond the city or town of Redwood. Mm -hmm. All right. So uh, so now staff knows exactly what to do. So no. <laughs> yeah. no, I mean, we'll yeah. back so I just got a complaint today. This is my first complaint ever. Um, and so Monica Diaz came to my house. Um, I wasn't home. So can I keep my chickens till you all decide? Or how does that, <laughs> how does that work? Hi. So I'm happy to answer that. Hillsboro, or not Hillsboro, I'm in Atherton. Atherton, where I was just leaving. I was just <laughs> works is we are complaint based. We don't go out looking for problems. If one comes to us, we are obligated to pursue it. That is a totally separate area. The law as exists right now is you're not allowed to have chickens. Um, you can work with code enforcement. Maybe if they are pursuing it, they might take a different view towards giving you a certain amount of time while this proceeds. I mean, there's different avenues, um, so, but I, you definitely have to continue working with her. Okay, so just I'll give her a call later. Yes, she's super nice. Oh, um, no, she was great. She yeah. told me about the meeting tonight. So There you are. So um, yeah, there are different avenues that are possible, and you can work with her, and if the committee decides, or the commission decides to take it up as an issue, and there's some resolution in the future, she might um, put a stay on things. Okay, thank you. Okay, the staff then, the direction of the staff would be to do some benchmarking and bring them back uh, with some uh, ideas about what the what policies we might want to look at or not, and give us a sense for what is what is surrounding areas uh, policies are, and then bring bring it back for the discussion and, and public comment, and then we'll decide if we take action uh, to for our staff to come up with with a uh, ordinance or not at that point. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. okay. And can there can there be some look at this issue as a quality of life issues? I think some people look to their chickens as pets. Mm -hmm. Um, and to this lady's point, um, chickens might be cleaner than dogs. Um, and so uh, I think if we round out the, the research and are thinking about it, um, it might allow us to, to, I don't know, just think about it in a way that's less divisive. Yeah. It's definitely a lifestyle change. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's an Oh, the city manager is also interested in topics to put on his. I don't even know what he calls that. Open go oh, or something. Yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah. 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 He's got something where you can go on and you can kind of state your opinion. So, if the commission is interested in studying this further, he would love to put that out there to kind of engage the community. It's it's our way to try to get more input than this. This is fabulous. We got two attendees. I'm excited, but to get a more community wide perspective. So, he didn't mind that. Yeah, let's come yeah. up, before we do that, let's go, let's yeah. go back to the benchmarking and the information for mm -hmm. oh. that understand. That's what I was going to say. Okay. Are we directing staff to only have chickens or yeah. everything, or what are we doing? Uh, the motion is ready to be made. Well, I was hoping to discuss it before somebody makes a motion. Oh, good. Well, we have probably have that, so go ahead. No, no, but I'm saying, well, what's our collective understanding on it? Uh, I don't think we... Yeah, I don't think so either. That's what I'm asking. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I just... My gut is, is that we're not all there yet. So the question from, I guess, to staff is, from a timing, uh, I hate to take uh, piecemeal and do this, but it doesn't seem like there's much interest in doing anything other than chickens at the point that he's allowed. I don't, I don't, the way I was thinking about it was there would be regulations around around uh, animal care or animal, you know, of different types in, in, in the region. So. One con one city might have said animals have this kind of structure or this or there's not or we're not allowing it so I'd want to see that some other group might have 
the only two things they regulate are horses and chickens and something else. So I, what I was hoping to see was the surrounding areas, what are the regulations around okay. around mm -hmm. Anna Ross, uh, uh, mm -hmm. you know, as a benchmark. And then from there, we can either narrow it based on the community request, but at least that way, the longer we're going out there to find out about animal regulations, if you say, do you have any regulation on chickens? They'd be no, but oh, well, we have horses and snakes and everything else. That could be worth, worthwhile from, from a potential standpoint also. So if, you, if we're comfortable with that, with, and if, if the staff is comfortable with the idea that that one, they'll put them on a wild goose chase forever, uh -huh. then, then let's, the, we could go with that. I mean, it's usually contained in one right. code section. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Animal, care animal it's usually one right. section of the code, yeah. and we can and do a little table summary section, for you. Section, we can cherry okay. pick it. Okay. Does that work? Yeah, it's fine. All right, so I need a motion to that effect. Okay. Am I moving it just yeah. to yeah. get the it's benchmark? Just, I don't know, I understand it, just in terms of language, I just took a uh, formal motion. Yeah. I move it, whatever you said is fine. All right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. To group? request staff further research, yeah. um, animal regulations in other jurisdictions bring right. it back for your consideration. I'll keep that. Yeah, sure. correct. Second. Motion. Second. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? None. And abstain? None. All right. Uh, two absent. Whatever. All right. Uh, let's see. The, the next item on the agenda is the commissioner's report. And for new commissioners, what this is, well, thank you very much for staying. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Tell your friends. Come next time. All right. So, um, the commission report, just so you know, is, is an opportunity for uh, for any of us to just mention things that didn't, that, that the meetings we went to, or other committees we're on, or uh, things that might be interesting from a planning perspective. Uh, uh, at this point, it's sort of a free space for the commissioners to have a moment. If there is nothing, then we go on to the next thing. But if there is something, we stop. So, so what we, we, we postponed the approval of the minutes. We, uh, Joanna can't be part of that. Um, in terms of the planning commission chair and vice chair, how's that generally? I mean, I remember on general plan how we did it, but is it, we should go through it again. So I'm just curious on why we're, we're missing two people, of course, so it'll be next time. Mm -hmm. But what's the criteria? What's a, is there a, is it a popularity contest? Is it a, hey, somebody's finished, so we're not, I mean, what, what's the? Yeah, there's nothing established in the code. It just indicates that the commission shall select the chair, you know, and someone's around the meetings and a vice chair to act in place. Um, the role of the chair is, like Eric's doing this evening, to run the meeting, keep us on task. But I also like to meet with the chair prior to the meeting to go over and set the agenda. Um, it's very helpful to be able to review items to see, you know, are they ready? Are there any other questions? Mm -hmm. And then also to gauge, you know, how full of an agenda is this item going to be controversial or can we go ahead and just get through 10 items mm -hmm. and crank it out? Um, generally, there's been a rotation, you know, kind of based on seniority, but there's definitely been occasions where um, either a commissioner didn't want to be chair, just wasn't comfortable in the role, or um, the board wasn't comfortable with the that. The board wasn't comfortable with that person. I mean, there's definitely been that situation. So there's That's there's really right. nothing set. Well, so so is it that is it a year? Is it two years? Is it five? It's typically a one-year term. Oh, it's actually been a one-year term. And have you been chair before? Up here? Yes. No, I've, no, I've never had I've been vice chair. Vice chair. And either of these people been? I don't know. No. 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 Paul, uh, and, the, the, and in terms of seniority, uh, uh, Guest was uh, uh, was uh, put on just before me. I was the one right behind. And then Paul was the most recent one behind. Okay. But it's really up to, you know, whoever you're comfortable with. No, I want to know more process. Yeah. 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 I don't yeah. Fair enough. Just myself. Yeah. 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 She was. She she chose not to chose not I'm to sorry, be vice chair. Yeah. She yeah. chose she yeah. chose not to be. Huh. Yeah. Any reason or just busy? I don't think she's cited the reason that's in the No, she did not provide the reason. Mm -hmm. Okay. Not that it matters, I just I'm always curious. Okay. okay. All right. So you'll run it till we have a a real chair. A real chair. Yeah. You seem like a very real chair. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Stay in the line. <laughs> 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 All right. All right. Any other commissioner on it? All right. Staff report.
Mark, so this is an opportunity for the staff to give us updates on things that are maybe left here and went off to, to let us know the stuff to the uh, city council. Yeah, as I indicated, the basement ordinance did move forward pretty smoothly, so they were very supportive of your recommendations. Um, they also did the second reading and adoption of changes to the special events ordinance, and that came from mm -hmm. the planning commission as well. Um, we are anticipating an application from Menlo School to do some changes to the interior of the campus so that it doesn't affect the field. This is on campus. We're anticipating that at the next meeting. Um, we're working on the final response to comments on the draft EIR for Civic Center. And I do need, I should have given you copies when I saw you last. Uh, we distributed the draft EIR for Civic Center right when it was available to the commission to give extra time to review it. So we'll make sure we get that to you. We've received a few comments, not a lot. Um, so we're working on responding to those comments now, and then we'll publish that document. So if it's ready, I'd love to bring it forward to the Commission's consideration in August. Um, but it could be that as the Civic Center is evolving, we want to make sure that the EIR is in lockstep with that and analyzes the project fully. So there could be a scenario where that's delayed a bit. Um, and that's it. I think I'll also make sure you have the published schedule of meetings. Nice job.